Hey you, welcome to the video. We were just checking out this Godox SL100 by which is a COB chip on board LED light that you can change the color temperature from 2800 Kelvin all the way to 6500 Kelvin. Not only that, it has effects. Here, let's do one that's not quite so jarring. Several years ago, Godox released the SL60, which was their first video light, continuous video light uh, in this form factor. So this chip on board kind of spotlight type form factor. And at the time, it was probably the best competitor to Aperture, who had the 120D on the market, which was six to seven times more expensive than the Godox. And it became a really popular option for content creators for YouTubers who were trying to make that first investment in increasing the quality of their videos through lighting. Let me go back to continuous. And Godox has continued to fill out the SL line with higher wattage, higher output lights, as well as daylight and tungsten options, and now with the bicolor options. Godox did send me the SL100 Bi and also the QRP70 softbox, but I'm not required to say anything about either. You're just gonna get my honest and unbiased opinions about them. And as usual, check the playhead for the chapter markers if you wanna skip around to different parts of the video. Wow. As an entry-level light, it's missing some pro-level features you'll find on Godox's VL series lights and also the Lightstorm series from Aperture. It also doesn't really come with a whole lot, so you get the light, obviously. A little chip cover, a little plastic cover to protect the COB, and you get a reflector, and of course you get the power cable, which is about 15 feet long. Speaking of power, the SL100 by cannot be powered with battery, so AC only. The controls are on the back of the light, but you can also control the light with the RC-A6 remote control, but that's sold separately. If you have some older Godox lights that came with remote controls like the RC-A52 here, they do not pair with the SL100 by. You specifically need the RC-A6. However, you can control the light with the Godox light app, and we'll take a look at that in a bit. It's a 100 watt light and it's putting out 32,100 lux at one meter with the included reflector. For me, the big party trick of this light is that adjustable color temperature. From a cool 6,500K down to a warm 2,800K. Adjustable in 100K increments, you can really fine tune the exact temperature you need. Speaking of party tricks, the SL100 by has 11 built-in lighting effects. Aside from adjusting the brightness, you don't have any control over how the effects operate. Even so, there's some pretty good effects in here that I could see being useful for some narrative scenes. High frame rate. So one of the knocks on the SL60 was that you would get banding in high frame rates. I tested in a variety of high frame rates and I didn't see any banding at all in any frame rate. Here's probably a good place to take a look at the app. It's a pretty simple app, so I'm not gonna go into crazy depth, but it's worth noting that it is a universal app, so it's designed to work around every Godox light that supports it, and as such, there are some effects and features in here that aren't supported by the SL100 by. Let's get into the build quality and how the light functions. For an entry-level light, in my opinion, the build quality is excellent. It's all plastic, but it feels like a very dense and hard plastic, and it doesn't feel cheap or weak. The mount is also pretty sturdy, and it feels like it can support some pretty heavy modifiers. In fact, let's see how well it can support this giant softbox. The controls on the back of the light all feel nice. The dials don't have any wobble or play in them. The buttons are rubber and tactile. Again, I just don't have any complaints about the build of this light. I feel like I'm being overly enthusiastic. The big negative for me in terms of the build quality or the construction is just that there is a fan and that it's more audible than I'd like it to be. I wanted to give you an idea of how you could use this light as a key light for a talking head setup, whether that's for YouTube or like an interview setup, something like that. So I have the SL100 by, it's about three feet away from me and it's going through the softbox, the QRP70, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> softbox I talked about earlier. So in this scenario, I wanted to do a couple of different things. Just to show you how you can use this as a key light, this isn't a huge softbox. You could definitely get a bigger softbox if you wanted more of a wrap, less shadow on this side, uh, but I'm not using any other light or any other modifier to light this scene. So I'm gonna turn the light off. So that's the only thing we have as far as lighting is concerned, just the windows behind me and then the SL100 by as our key light. I have the light set to 75% brightness, but it's shooting through the softbox, which has two layers of diffusion on it. So 
it's not the full output of the light. It's definitely being cut back a little bit, but I figured just doing it this way will just give you an idea of a practical lighting setup as opposed to me just pointing it at a wall and showing you how bright it gets. But I don't know what the practical value of that is necessarily. The other thing I wanted to do was see if you could actually hear the light. I'm gonna be quiet for a second. I can just hear it a little bit if I really focus on it, but I can hear my refrigerator, which is about 20 feet away, more loudly. -er. The other thing I wanted to do was give you an idea of how it renders you know, skin tones, how it looks as the key light. It's at 5600 Kelvin and the camera, which is the, the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, is also at 5600 Kelvin. Next, I'm just gonna change the, the Kelvin, the color temperature of both the light and the camera so you can see how it lights my face and <laughs> the scene at different color temperature values. It should stay the same, right? If the camera and the light are matched. But again, that's another thing too. I'm not gonna like manually white balance the camera using a gray card or a white card. I'm just gonna match the camera's number to the light's number. And those might not be exactly the same. So let's go up to 6,500K. Now both the camera and the light are set to 4,300K. If you found yourself in some offices with a lot of fluorescent lighting, those tend to be around 4,300, I believe, for fluorescence, so if you needed to match that. And now both are set to 3,200, which is about tungsten. If you needed to match other existing tungsten lights, here you go. And this is at 2,800K for both the light and the camera. Shouldn't be that big a difference between that and 3,200. Let's just wrap up this video with my overall thoughts about the Godox SL100 by. As you can probably tell by now, I really do like this light a lot. I do think it's a perfect light for content creators, YouTubers, people who are gonna be setting it up and kind of just letting it be <laughs> and not taking it on the road. That would be my first major negative. And again, it's not really its intended use case. It doesn't come with a bag. There's no battery powering options with it. I do think the quality of the light and the fact that you can change color temperatures and some of those effects could all be useful on paid jobs. You could definitely fill out your light kit without really breaking the bank. The other negative for me is that fan. It's not really loud and it does have kind of a consistent low hum, so you could probably just EQ that out. If you're not using it as a key light, but more a fill or even a backlight or rim light, then that really isn't an issue anyway. I think that's everything. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if there was anything I left out or was unclear, please leave a comment. As always, I appreciate you watching the video. And if you want to see more videos about lights, setting up lights and all that kind of stuff, maybe check out this playlist. Thanks for watching.